welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming the limited edition tag video. This one was created by my wonderful friend on YouTube, Angelica Nyquist. Oh my gosh, I talk about her, I think, more than I talk about makeup sometimes. <laughs> Just kidding. I love her though. If you haven't checked out her channel, I will go ahead and link it up in the cards and down in the description box as well. She's an amazing Swedish YouTuber and is like a breath of fresh air to the YouTube makeup community, so I hope you guys will check her out. But she created this tag video and I filmed it the first time and I hated all my answers. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and refilm this. Hopefully round two will be better. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you guys have filmed this video or if you want to. Definitely go ahead and do it and leave me your link in the comments because I'd love to check it out. These questions are hard, so I know Angelica was like, um, seems like a lot of people don't want to talk about limited edition makeup and I'm like, Girl, I don't know what to tell you because brands suck in limited edition. Everything seems to come back. So all my answers are like contingent upon things not being re-released, but I feel like the makeup community let me down somehow, some way, they always do. So anyway, um, first question, what is the limited edition product you are most happy you got your hands on? So for this one, I have to say the ABH X Mario palette. I am a fan of Mario. I went to his masterclass in Chicago like two years ago and it was so fun. He is such a down-to-earth dude and I do love his like natural neutral makeup looks. He excels at that and it was just fun to like be in the room with somebody that was so good at makeup and just watch that whole process. I didn't know like people were taking like notes furiously and I'm like what the fuck do I write down? Like I want to watch. I was just like I would go again. I really would. If I could afford it, I would love to go see him again. So I would recommend if you guys have thought about doing it, definitely do it. It's definitely worth the chance to go to a masterclass by Mario. So yes, I was very happy to get his palette because I'm a 100% like a fangirl of his and yeah, I just love that palette so I'm happy I got my hands on it. What is your least favorite limited edition product you picked up? The thing you could have been without. So I actually recently got rid of this palette, but it is the Kat Von D Metal Matte Palette. I know a lot of people love that palette, and I was so happy that somebody on Poshmark got mine and wanted it, and I feel like they're going to treasure it, but for me, it just sat there. I barely used it. Those cool tones are just not my makeup vibes, so I was happy to get it out of my collection and happy to give it to somebody and that it went to a good home, but that palette was just not for me. Number three, what brand do you think does limited edition best? So this question is really hard for me to answer. Just like I said in the intro, it's so rare to find a limited edition product these days. I feel like they say things are limited edition, but the next second they're back in stock, they're available, or it's like, here we found some palettes in the back, so now they're coming back again. Like, I just don't understand. I thought Anastasia Beverly Hills used to be really good at limited edition. There were a lot of palettes that they did, 16 pan or whatever, those, you know, like the modern renaissance where they had like the World Traveler palette, Self Made palette, um, Breezy palette, Maya Mia palette. Those palettes were iconic, but they never came back in stock. And that was part of their appeal, the limited edition factor. So, mm, but now ABH, you know, like the Mario palette came back a few times and you could buy it even though it was supposed to be limited edition. So I, I don't have an answer because I don't think any brand does limited edition well at all. It's terrible. Like we should just stop making things limited edition because nobody can like stand, like hold up to that standard. And I feel like limited edition is all about street credit. So if you say something that's limited edition and then you bring it back and you bring it back and you bring it back like Morphe, then people are just going to stop taking you seriously on the limited edition thing. You know what I mean? So number four, and to flip things over, what brand do you think does limited edition the worst? So I have to say Becca only because like, come on, Champagne Pop and Prosecco Pop and like all of their highlighters, they constantly say they're limited edition and then they take them away and then they bring them back out or they just like change the name and bring back a very similar shade. So because of that reason, I would say Becca Cosmetics is probably the worst at limited edition. And they've definitely like built up a reputation of being one of those brands that's like sneaky and they say something's limited edition, but it's not. Number five, name one thing or more you wish wasn't limited edition. So for this one, again, this palette used to be limited edition, but they bought it back. But that was more of a legit thing because they said like people actually asked for it to be made permanent, which I, I think is true. Um, and that palette is the Queen of Hearts palette by 
Colored Rain. I love that palette. Oh my gosh, it's like one of my go-to palettes. If I don't know what to do and I have to be somewhere, I reach for the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette because every look is perfect and I love, like I can do a berry tone look, look with that palette, so I love it and I am so glad that it is not limited edition and they made it permanent. Number six. What is the thing that got away, the thing you missed and will forever regret not getting? So I feel like most people's go-to answer with that particular question is going to be the Mi Vida Loca palette by Kat Von D. Now, here's my thing with Kat Von D. I love a lot of the stuff her brand does. I used to love the Kat Von D, the Locket Foundation. And I don't know, I just felt like there was a time where I had a lot of things from her brand. I was very interested in her brand. But as the years have gone on, a lot of the palettes from her that I bought is because I wanted to review them for my channel. It was never because like I was in particular like dying for the palette and it was a lot of FOMO. Like I ended up taking back her 10 year anniversary palette. I'm going to return her like highlighting palette that I got. I just don't want it. I, I don't know why I bought it. It was on sale and I was like, oh my god, let me buy it. But I don't want it. So a lot of her stuff, it's like I, I've gotten over it and it's the same with the Mavita Loca palette because so many people want that goddamn palette and I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Like, we don't fucking need it. We have a million other rainbow palettes. Like, we'll all be fine. So if I have to answer the question, I'm going to say the Mavita Loca palette, but in the grand scheme of things, like, I'm fine. Literally couldn't care less. Like, whatever. <laughs> okay, number seven. What thing that was limited edition but was made permanent later? On made you made the most sense versus the least sense to you so for most sense of course again the Queen of Hearts palette I think that was a wonderful palette you know everyone can use a palette like that and color rain has a like a wonderful formula so I'm glad they made that permanent and I think that palette still does well for them so that made the most sense the least sense I would say probably like the Jaclyn Hill palette like I think they would have made more money if they just let that be a limited edition palette. But I guess, I don't know. I don't see Morphe's numbers. I don't know. You know, I think they started off saying it was going to be limited edition, which forced people to buy it. And then they're like, mm, oh my God, now we're going to sell it at Ulta. So I think Morphe does make sense to me. So anyway, that is one that did make sense. Okay, number eight. What thing that is permanent do you think would have been better off limited edition? Uh, Angelica, these questions are freaking hard. Um, what is permanent that should have been made limited edition? That was my cat, by the way. Um, I don't know, guys. I Can I say skip? What did I... I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm going to pass on that question. I have no idea. I think everything should just be made permanent. And then if it doesn't sell, they can like discontinue it versus the limited edition, like push rush, like everyone's dying to get it. And then it sells out. So you can't get it. And then they make it permanent bullshit. Like I can't number nine. What is the best collab limited edition thing release so far, according to you? So I love the Mac Viva Glam series. Not a huge fan of MAC cosmetics in general. Like I, I went through this phase where I bought everything that I could get my hands on that was MAC, but I'm done with that now. And I do think the Viva Glam series is so special because 100% of the proceeds from those collections do go to the MAC AIDS fund, which I think is an amazing cause. And it's nice to see brands do something like that, like a little bit more humanitarian, a little bit more charity, because God, like people love makeup. and. I don't even know like what the numbers are for like what the makeup industry is making currently but you have to know that it's a profitable industry because you see how much brands are investing in influencers, brand trips, creating palettes like it is all you know good return for them so I think it's great that MAC is doing something to give back to the community by having the MAC AIDS fund. I think it's great that they partner with celebrities and it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Okay, so question number 10 is what limited edition item would you like to see released? And again, I'm just going to say, I'm going to give this one to the people and I'm going to say I think most people would be so happy if Kat Von D launched the Mimi to Loca palette again. I don't know how many cells she'll get after the whole anti-wax situation, but there's no other palette on YouTube that I've heard people request more 
for a comeback than that particular palette. So hopefully you guys will all get what you want and someday that palette will come back. I personally am not holding off for that. I did get to talk to Heather, who is the owner of Sydney Grace one day. I was talking to her on Instagram, she's so sweet. And I was like, can you do a like bunch of dupes for the Mimita Loca palette? Because I think that you would make a killing. Um, and they do a lot of like the dupes for, you know, popular... What? Come here. Come here. Hi. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So yeah, if any indie brands are watching this video, come out oh come out with a dupe palette for Kat Von D's Mibita Loca palette because I think you'll make a absolute killing. Okay guys, that is everything for my limited edition tag video. Angelica, I hope I made you proud. Um, and like I said, these questions were hard. So if you guys want to go ahead and create this video, I will go ahead and leave the questions down in my description box. And again, check out Angelica's video. Tell her I said hi. If you guys go ahead. Oh my God. Hi. She's so whiny. She's like the most antisocial of all my pets. So what? What is wrong? Oh my god. I think she's gonna kill me, guys. Do I put you down? Okay, 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 go. Okay, go. Okay, okay. Woof! <laughs> Drama! Okay, so anyway, check out Angelica's channel. I have cat hair in my mouth now. Uh, thank you guys so much for checking out this, oh my god, tag video. And I will see you in my next video soon. Bye, guys. Ugh. Okay.